Today I'm going to do a knockback function and I'm using the new vector force and angular force. I put the knockback on Chuck. Chuck likes to run up and kick people. Bruh! I also put it on my pistol right here so I can shoot Chuck and knock him back. There we go. I thought that would be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. I have a fresh world right here and I'm going to put the knockback on my simple pistol. You could follow along or get your own weapon. This is actually very easy to add this stuff. So I'm going to get my browser. I'll put this link in the description right here. This will be green and says, and says get if you don't have it. So I have my pistol simple gun. That's what I named it. And let's close that. Then when you have it, go to your toolbox, go to your inventory, and you should have it in there, right? Simple. Let's see if Roblox works today. Yep. Barely. There we go. And it has two scripts. You can watch the videos if you don't trust them. But you can check them out too. There we go. Let's open them up. And this is the damage script. This is where I'm going to add my knockback. So in order to have knockback, you're going to need the players uh, or the NPC, whoever is doing the knocking, the hitting, and the person who's getting hit, right? That's the only two things you're going to need. And we have that in this script. We have our player and we have our target. Now I'm going to put my knockback above the on shoot because we're going to call it right when we do the take damage. That's the key to the knockback. Look for where it says take damage. So I'll put it up here, local function knockback. And remember, we just want two characters. We want the one doing the hitting, which I'm going to call the player character, although it might not be a player. And then we're going to have the E character for the enemy. That's the one getting hit. That's the one doing going back, right? And then we're going to call it right around where we take damage. I think I'm going to call it after I take damage. So go here. We have our knockback. Now we have the player, right? So we'll do the player dot character to send the player's character over. We're going to check for nil in the knockback. And then we have the enemy character because since we have a humanoid, we know that that is a character, right? So I'll just do a control C target dot parent is a character. All right. Now we're ready to start doing our knockback stuff. So let's check to make sure our pchar and echar exist in the knockback function. So I'll do an if pchar and echar, make sure they didn't like die and are respawning or we're trying to knock them back. Then I want to get the humanoid root part of each. So I'm going to say local phrp, we'll get that from the pchar, find first child humanoid root part. I'm going to do the same for the for the enemy character too. Let's do a control C to copy, control B to paste, and then we'll put an E in here, and we're going to get that from the E char. There we go. And just to be extra special paranoid that we don't get any errors for this, let's do an if for PHRP and EHRP. All right. Now, I want to get the directions between the two humanoid root parts so that I can hit them and they can fly in the right direction. So I'm going to do a local DIR equals, I'm going to get the enemy HRP's position, subtract it from the player's HRP's position, and then I'll make it the unit vector. So it's a vector of magnitude one. And that way we know we can calculate units a little bit easier. And what else do I need? So the big difference between the old body movers and like vector force and angular velocity, we need an attachment. So let's go ahead and put an attachment on the humanoid root part. It's going to default right into the center, but the major axis is going to be pointing to the left by default. So we just have to keep that in mind. That's all right. Let's call ATT, the variable ATT for an attachment. We'll do an instance new attachment there we go and let's parent it to the enemy humanoid root part now we're going to get the uh, vector force so we'll do local 
call it force. And I'm gonna do an instance dot new vector force. And that is also gonna be parented to the humanoid root part. All right, now let's get our force variable and then get the attachment property, attachment zero property of the force and then assign ATT to that. That's connecting your force to your attachment. Now I'm gonna get the force variable. This is the vector force and assign the actual force to it. There's a force field. And that is gonna be the direction between the P char and the E char. And I'm gonna add a little upward direction too. So I'll say vector three plus new zero in the X one, that's the upward direction and zero on the Y. Then let's go outside the parentheses, do a dot unit to normalize that to a magnitude of one. Now we're going to multiply by let's do 10,000. You can play around with these for different values, uh, different effects, right? I think I'm going to do the force relative to, let's do it relative to the world, right? So we're going to do enum dot actuator relative to, I know that's crazy, and then we'll do world. So you're making the force relative to the world, not the attachment itself. And you can play around with these to get the different values, see what happens. I recommend you changing some of these numbers. I recommend trying it with the attachment and with the world to get the effect that you want. And like this is the upward force, so you might wanna change that too. You might wanna make it like, see what happens if you make it a five or something. All right, now down here, I'm gonna get the E char and I want the humanoid from the E char, and I'm gonna do something called platform stand and set that equal to true. So I'm getting that property. I'll put a link in the description. It's kind of interesting. I just brought it up really quick. It's for this free falling state. So the link was actually gonna bring you right to this fragment, this platform stand fragment. If you set it to true, you're in a free falling state and you can't get out of it until you change it. Let's get back to it. So I'll set that to true. They're gonna fly around and they're not gonna be able to move. Before we put our angular velocity on here, let's try it out. Make sure we don't have any errors. So we'll go to base plate and then avatar. Let's put two rigs down. So I'll put a R15 rig. There we go. And then let's put an R6 because I get that question all the time. Oh, not animation editor, rig builder, R6 rig all right we got one of each don't forget to on anchor the humanoid root part so i have my r6 here go to anchored uncheck and now go to the other dummy which is the r15 humanoid root part scroll down uncheck let's play it and then we're going to shoot them now remember it's not done so they're gonna fly forever. We're gonna continue with that and we're gonna add angular velocity and some other stuff. But we wanna make sure that we're not getting any errors down here. So I'm gonna shoot the dummy. <laughs> Boom! Oh, yeah, that was a little, bit of, a little bit of a stall to get going there. <laughs> Boom! That's all right. Studio's a little bit laggy like that. My studio is. I think that looks good. We don't have any errors. Let's go ahead and push forward, do our angular velocity now. So I'm gonna turn my game off and I'm gonna get rid of this output window so I have a little more space to program. Go to damage, the damage script on the pistol and let's add the angular velocity. I'll scroll a little bit, put this closer to the center of the screen. And now I'm gonna get a variable local called I'll call it rot for rotation, right? That's my rotational angle force. Instance.new, angular velocity. I'm gonna put it on the EHRP, the enemy HRP. And, oh, I hate when it does that. There we go. It doesn't, it doesn't format sometimes, and then I always think there's an error. I always have to check. I think I'm all right though. I think it's just a Roblox glitch. So. We're going to get the rotational variable and then we have that attachment zero 
and we'll just use the ATT from the force. You could try it with two different attachments, see if you get different effects. This will work though. Uh, we're gonna do that every time now. On our rot variable, we also wanna set the property for angular velocity. I'm gonna do a vector three dot new. I'll just do one by one by one and multiply this by a scalar number. I'll multiply it by 30. Right, I did I did random numbers between negative 30 and 30 on the video. Let's see what this gets us. All right, I'm also gonna need max torque. So rot dot max torque. Let's make that math dot huge. And what about our relative to? I think I'll keep that relative to the attachment. Let's see what that gets us. So relative to I believe this is the default. So we'll do enum actuator relative to attachment zero. So I'll put it in there. That way we can change it to world if we don't like it. Let's scroll up a little bit. Almost done. And what else do we need? Oh, uh, let's get rid of our attachment, our angular force, and our vector force after we already apply everything. So I'm gonna use the debris service to give it a two tenths of a second to live to apply the force. So I'll say gain dot debris colon add item. We wanna get rid of our force. So we'll give it a time to live of 0.2 seconds. Gain dot debris add item. We wanna get rid of our rot 0.2 seconds. And then we also wanna get rid of our attachment. Oops, colon. ATT.2. And I think what I'll do is I'll wait two seconds and then I'm going to change that each our humanoid platform stand to false. Then they'll be able to move. False. So you can make this a longer number. The one side effect I find with this is there's like a little flop when it, when it, activates so you'll see it when they go to when they go to get up or after they get hit let's try it yeah i got my pistol <laughs> boom that's pretty good that's a lot of force so the r6s move fa uh, farther than the r15s well no maybe not i think that's pretty good we could uh we could tone down some of those values but i'm pretty happy with it 